All right, we are now recording. This is a sandbox discussion. Vote to come later. Yes. Uh, hi. Uh, today is uh, December 13th. Uh, thank God it's not a Friday yet. So <laughs> uh, let's start with Merbridge. Merbridge, <clears throat> uh, does anybody have notes on Merbridge that they would like to share? Um, yeah, I have um, I have gone through this, gone through it, and have some notes. Um, so this part it makes traffic uh, interception at the soccer level and the leverages eBPF to directly forward packets from one socket to another socket instead of instead of going through the existing Linux kernels IP table, right? Which uh, so it, it's it speed up the data pass in the service mesh, uh, which I think it's a, it's a great improvement and also I. The industry is moving on towards that direction, so I, I think it's a it's a very good part. It helps um, the performance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one uh, thing that I had was this is Istio specific, um, so I was going to ask if uh, they should talk to Istio folks or not. Um, that is the only other thing that I had. I don't. I don't think it is. Uh, in my notes, I have that they integrate like an EPPF accelerator for any service mesh. And they mentioned both Linkerd and Istio. Yeah, that's what yes. I had in my yes. notes too. Yeah. Yeah, and oh, the, only yeah. Thing I noted, uh, the only thing I noted yeah. is that uh, they are only useful for those that are not doing EPPF yet, but mm -hmm. still it's super interesting. But like things like Cilium uh, service mesh offering or say if Istio starts doing EPPF, then the value is less, but but for now this is very nice. Okay. Agreed. Um, oh, yeah, I just want to add that you know there are other uh, I, I see other presentations on um, you know the um, TCP IP um, um, bypass IP table bypass, which address you know um, the same problem you know um, using this eBPF. Uh, so maybe they can try to expand that, incorporate more. Um, contributors or, or maintainers from other companies. Yeah, yeah. that's the oh. only thing. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so we are not voting right now, right? Uh, but uh, you know, broad agreement is broad something. agreement. Yes. Any anyone dissenting here uh, who's on the call today right now? Going once, going twice. Okay. Um, I will add this to the vote. Moving on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, dev space. Uh, dev space is interesting. This is from the loft folks as well. Um, and the thing that I liked here was this architecture flow diagram, um, where you start with uh, uh, one is it a YAML file or a JSON file, uh, and then uh, essentially bootstrap a work area for yourself and to build and push and run on Kubernetes and then so this is similar to the you know uh, tilt stuff uh, from loft as well um, so in general I think we need to pay more attention to developer oriented tools um, and this one seems like it's in a good space for that yeah I think with the right level of visibility and community support that this could this could really take off within the community and the ecosystem. I didn't see anything within the project that gave me any pause for consideration. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I agree. Agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, it streamlines the deployment workflow. Has a very mm -hmm. good roadmap, and I think it's a very useful project to enhance uh, developer velocity. Should we, should we have a, a developer tag? I, I think once we have enough set of people that are, care about this developer uh, tooling stuff, I think we should definitely, um, you know, do that. Um, the app delivery has been doing the a bunch of the developer stuff because it comes closest to that, right. and that's where those things have tended to fall today. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like we, we might have to carve out some some stuff from. We the delivery folks to and to bootstrap this, and we already have some things like telepresence. We've had for a long time. Right. I bet right. you we've got a number of projects that already fit into this dev space. 
yeah. that we could probably justify yeah. it today. But that's that's a separate thing. This project has been around since 2018. It's got over 3,000 stars. Yep. They've shown they know how to be a, an open source project. Yep. And, uh, yeah. Uh, so um, any dissension here? Um, since uh, in the so we can go faster. Um, let's go twice. Go twice. Okay, so uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, next one is uh, the OPCR. OPCR, we talked about it once. They, they, we sent them to talk to the OPA folks. They came back with some feedback. Um, and the feedback is summarized here. Um, I'm a little so confused and like how this plays out for other sandbox projects um, because originally we had sent them back um, to be considered potentially as a, as a sub project underneath of OPA. OPA doesn't necessarily feel like they're a good fit because they want to see broader adoption, which yeah. the sandbox provides a place for vendor neutral collaboration, increasing adoption, but it is not designed necessarily to be the adoption kind of like producer for projects like that that really happens when they reach a higher level of maturity and better stability so if this is accepted as a sandbox project and opa and like it start we start seeing widespread adoption they get ten thousand users as, as a milestone which is interesting mm -hmm. um does opa suddenly come in and say all right we want you as a sub project and now we remove them from the sandbox like how does that work and and how do other people feel about that potentially playing uh, it, it, I think it can go uh, either way, right? Um, so uh, starting off by itself and then the OPA project saying, yes, uh, come join us. Uh, I think that that is good. Uh, and yeah, so we've done both ways, right? Like, so uh, we, Helm was part of Kubernetes and then we split out. Uh, and then um, uh, we have, uh, like, for example, there was one more project uh, in container D space that uh, you know came back into con container D as a sub project uh, and that was outside uh, do you remember which one justin uh no i don't remember now but yeah i think uh, we've had a, we've had a few do that right I, that I got it the run wasi yeah run wasi was not sandbox and they still came to uh, you know if it is, if we can bring outside projects into existing um um you know uh, graduated projects i think it, it should be fine to get uh, sandbox projects into um, and use sandbox uh, as that path yeah okay yeah what, what one question i have they they've got a registry there running um apcr.io a free hosted registry around the policies which is so are we going to pay the cost of running this for a sandbox project, which we don't normally provide resourcing for. My, I would push them towards uh, asking for support from Artifact to to, to kind of at least do the indexing, but we generally won't won't host full blown registries for for folks at the sandbox level. Yeah, Artifact Hub is only metadata. It doesn't actually host yeah. any resources, so there still has to be a registry mm -hmm. hosting the resources. Right. Point. Yeah, it's not. It's uh, not clear I, to I, me. It's not clear to me why that it necessarily is useful to have a separate registry hosting rather than just metadata for this project in the long run, anyway. Because yeah, why? Why, yeah. why do you want a different registry for your policies versus it, something else it, if it's just an ACI registry? It, maybe. Maybe uh, I'm wrong. Like, oh, I think uh, uh, I'm looking at the submission, it seems to be only for the CLI, though, not for the registry part. Well, in that case, but then if the registry is prioritized as the default location of the CLI, and that's not in NCF, that's also, also a problem. Yeah, we can, we can talk to them about that, right, Justin? We can tell them uh, that uh, yeah. you, know, you, you can't have your own thing as a default. Uh, we tell them uh, many projects anyway, uh, the same thing. Like we told Cubescape, too. Um, and they came back to us and said, it's okay. Um, we'll not throw in a default, which points to our own um, vendor stuff. But it's not, I don't think it's vendor stuff because it's got the same name as the project. It's apcr.io. So I don't think it is a vendor. So I think okay. it's more of an issue that 
Yeah. yeah. So, so the caveat here, we, we should probably tell them is, uh, hey, um, we will not be, you will need to do whatever you want to do with uh, the uh, the service itself, uh, rename it, uh, you know, call it something else, and it should not be the default. Yeah, the project. And if it's just container, if there's stuff in container images. Go ahead, Matt. Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say that the project and their service can't have the same name. We got to make that. We've made that clear before. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. And they didn't address uh, exactly. It. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. other but if than their that, policies are stored as container images, it should be like they should be able to use any container registry, right? And just yes. that should be configurable. So, Only then yeah. it will be useful to everybody if they can. Well, you know, they, it says they can, but it's just the default. The default is apcr.io. Okay. Yeah, we'll tell them to rename that. Okay. Okay. A any others? Uh, you know, observations, suggestions. I, I had one. I had a note here. Uh, I can't find the link right now, but uh, I had a note. They had some discussion about integrating this with OPA, and there yeah. was some pushback. Uh, Correct. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they, they didn't. The OPA folks didn't want them to be a sub project of OPA. Uh, you know, it, I think it, there was some statement like OPCR is not open source or something like that. There was some aggressive <laughs> statement there. I, I, there may be some politics in play, but I think you know you could argue OPCR is early sta early stage. It's super early stage, right? So I could be OPA wanting to not you know right. not take a risk until the project's but a little maybe, bit more mature. If we reach out, maybe we ask them also to clarify that part. And and it could be they're talking about that separation between the hosted registry and the CLI, which is what we're getting into. They're they're named the same exactly. thing. Right. Yeah. So OPCR so basically what we're gonna, is open source. Right, right. So what we're gonna tell them is uh we would welcome uh the CLI and the library uh, part of it. We don't want the service. Uh you can you should rename the service and it cannot be the default, right? That covers all angles. Going once. Going do we twice. want them to reapply, or do we want them to vote? Do we want to vote on this now? Um, we are uh, we are not voting as such, but uh, the consensus is uh, we are going to throw in ca caveat that they cannot uh, bring the service in. Uh, we are not interested in the service. Um, they should have uh, some alignment with the artifact uh, hub for sure. Uh, and uh, the default can't be their service. Because I'm opening a vote for all of the discussions, do you want to add them in or do you want to have them reapply? Uh, let's add them in um, okay. in a second bucket, please. First okay. bucket is like, you know, Got where it. there are no objections. Thank you. So we add them in with the caveat. And yes. if they don't accept the caveat, then they don't come in. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Moving on. Okay. Goblet. Um, I, I kind of like this one. Did anybody uh, get a chance to look at this one? Yeah, um, I took a quick look at it. I I like the project. I think it's useful. However, I had some concerns that it seems like it's GCP heavy, um, but I also am not sure what the potential adoption is going to look like for this project. Like, I'm not sure that I can see this actually going fully fledged and reaching all the way out and becoming a graduated, highly mature project adopted across the ecosystem with the way that it's currently set up with just GCP only. Yeah, uh, yeah. I also went yeah. through this project. Um, it, it is especially for Google Cloud Run and uh, it's for Google serverless offering. And also it's, it's for it's, it's Python runtime. So, um, Python language. So I think the scope is very narrow as of today. Yeah, so I, I, I kind of agree with Emily. But... Yeah. yeah, so uh, they were saying that the equivalent for this on the AWS space is, uh, you know, uh, the Chalice stuff. Um, like, I, I, I don't know, is, is Chalice in the CNCF? No, right? I, no, I had a note. Not. It's not. Um, so I don't think I had that objection. The objection that I had is I think it was a uh, low number of people contributing. Um, it seemed. Um, well, that too. Yeah. 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 I, I like where it's going and I like the, the developer space. What yes. I don't like is obviously the low number of contributors, but the 
the single vendor, right? We talked before just about, you know, not favoring a single vendor. Yeah. And this is all targeted at GCP at the moment. Yeah. And so it's not a multi-vendor project. It's kind of a very useful project, but one that I think needs to grow into um, to being more multi-vendor before it fits within the CNCF. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I agree with that. And, and and I think we've we've not accepted projects before that will only run on proprietary services with no open source backend it runs on. Yep. Uh, or at least it should run on multiple of them, right? Okay. Um, I, I, I think we've been quite, oh, I don't think we've ever accepted something that only runs on proprietary services. Uh, um, maybe there's, maybe there's a couple of exceptions, but. Exactly, yeah. Custodian is probably doing that, no? Yeah, I think that might be the closest thing we've got, but. It, um, uh, some of those secure container stuff also, right? Uh, just well, we didn't, we didn't accept them in the end. But partly for that reason. Okay. So anyway, for Goblet, I think we can uh, say that uh, please ex please expand, uh, you know, where where people can run this uh, and, you know, build a little bit more of a community where there are additional contributors and reapply. Is that okay with everyone then? Yeah, I think I would also like to add that, you know, um, expand it with more languages, right? Just Python, you know, serverless, you can have many different languages. You can have Java, you yeah. can have Node.js. We can't force like, that. We can't force that, Kathy. Um, I mean, uh, you know, we should let them do it by themselves. Um, and they, think, the name okay. of the project starts with Go as well, right? So. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Right. I think we can give them suggestions. Right? The scope yeah. is too yeah. narrow. It's not very. If just Python, right? The user scenario will, will be limited. Yeah. yeah, it's one person doing it, right? So uh, we can't really, like, you know, uh, drive hard on that side. Yes, when the community expands, I'm sure they'll get asked about other languages. I'm sure you know people are asking the person already uh, for other languages. Just uh, maybe that is part of the reason they are coming here because you know, hey, um, we can build a community here in the sandbox, but then we do have this other restriction of like, hey, you need to be. I hate, more... hate to do this in the spirit yeah. of time. Can we yes. move on? Yes, please. Uh, uh, we can tell them to reapply uh, here, um, Amy. Yep, I have put language into the chat. Okay. Yeah, okay. so uh, Vine NAS, um, this seemed like uh a fork of ganesha fs um nfs and way too is, early it's only yeah, got four, it's got 40 commits it's like and it. one person yeah way too early okay so uh, come back when you build a little bit more of a community and um you know you have some other open sourcey things on your right okay Okay, uh, Worf. Uh, did anybody get a chance to look at Worf? I thought it was cool, but I had no opinions. Um, Kathy, uh, just yes, in. yeah, I did. Um, so let me look at my notes. Um, so it's roadmap has a list of issues to be worked on. Um, Looks like the it grows, you know, Git, Docker, Kubernetes, Helm with any CI system to provide software delivery to Kubernetes. But yeah. I do not see description that shows very strong technical merit or what is a yeah the thing technical merit that you know they will provide. And the user mostly from Russian speaking countries. Uh, so I think the reason they want to apply is they want to be more international. And uh, and also it said we are not sure whether moving this part to party to CNCF is relevant, but we are happy to discuss it. So I think you know, um, yeah, that that part. It's a little bit confusing to me. Um, the one, yeah, the one red star I had, uh, red flag I had was um, I think they mentioned they had a fork of Helm. So Matt, did you see that? Um, no, I did not. Let me. 
Yeah, yeah see, uh, it's right here. Um, somewhere. Um, Why would they fork it? That's the interesting. Um, Uh, somewhere in there. I, it's uh, embedded into the deployment process. They maintain yes. their own fork of Helm to extend some features that are not incl included, included in the upstream. Yeah, yeah. They also have their own tough um, implementation, which I had not come. I mean, one of the one of the things that's kind of about this project is, is that I've never heard of it before or before we came to the sandbox. I mean, I think that bringing it into the ecosystem and having some more relationship with Helm and the other things might be quite positive for them because yeah. they, 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 I think the impression I get is they're quite, they've been quite isolated. It's, you know, it's obviously got a, a bunch of users, it's got 3000 stars, but they're, they're not part of the community and bringing them in is probably better than not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would say the same thing too. And you know, I think it's a consultancy flant.com that is doing this. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And my concern is with forking, especially with things like Helm and maintaining a fork is keeping things up to date for security. And yep. just a brief look, I think they're using uh, their fork version of Helm has known CVEs in it. And so mm -hmm. they need to close the security. <laughs> they're gonna fork the projects. And uh, you need to keep up to date for security, I think. Yeah. Um, so it is better to bring them in so they can work with the rest of the community here um, is uh, what I'm leaning towards at this point. Uh, is that, do, does that feel okay, Matt? I think from the tough side, um, Justin also indicated the same. The, the, yeah, the tough thing they're using again is not applying as part of this which is Correct. kind of yeah. also kind of um once they come to the table we can open up that they said they are open to talking about it yeah. right yeah i think it would be a, something that it would be worth having the, the yeah, i mean once they, they have to get the security and, story together yeah yeah okay so um i think consensus seems to be positive so moving to the next one uh capsule has anybody Got a look at capsule. Um, I went through it. Uh, um, so it, it solves the problem when the Kubernetes tenant uh, needs more than one namespace. So basically, it groups a set of namespace resources into a new abstraction and assign assign it to a tenant. I think this technology is useful uh, because sometimes a tenant is not just it needs more than one namespace. Um, the the tenant spans multiple clusters, a na same namespace in the multiple clusters, I guess, and they have a way to synchronize things between the multiple clusters, um, right? Yeah, I, I also took that note. I think it, they they have the notion of a tenant instead of a namespace in a single cluster, but then they also spawn multi clusters. So it, it sounds really really interesting. I didn't yeah. dig very, I didn't go very deep, but. Uh, like the concept is very interesting. Yeah, I think it's useful, this project. I think uh, this is worthwhile bringing in because of the amount of multi-tenancy issues that it keeps showing up with projects. And this yep. might be a great way for them to tap into that. Yeah. I think also it would be interesting. I don't know how far we got with hierarchical namespaces, probably not very far yet. So this is also interesting to, to have a different separation. Yeah. Okay, um, so they're using everything to stitch things together. So um, multi-tenancy is definitely plus one for me to do stuff around multi-tenancy. Okay, I don't see any other red flags. Um, move, moving on to the next one. Okay, DevBox. Um, did anybody get a chance to look at DevBox? This seems very unclear why they think it's cloud native. I mean, it's an it's 
using Nix to make development shells is kind of hard to see where how you would um yeah it's like trial and error get get your container working and then you well it's not for containers necessarily it's for developers directly i mean it's for sh a shell not a container right and uh, no they you can create a container at the end once you're happy with it is what they said uh this is doc of doc of file yeah Okay, and essentially they use Nix under the covers, and uh, you know you, you end up uh, creating the devbox.json for each project, so you know exactly. Yeah, um, it's what's something like Python wheels, that kind of stuff, right? Okay, um, I don't see. How it us. Yeah. Can you check the form submission? I think they were missing a bit of the information that we asked. Uh, or add a note about this, like overlap and alignment with other projects. Do they have it there? Uh, yeah, I'll I'll scroll through. I'm reading and, and it says when ready, turn it into a container that can be deployed to the cloud. So that is the attachment that we they have with us. Okay. Uh, and, but and they, they, they have... didn't they didn't fill in the section on alignment with the CNCF projects. Yeah, I think yeah. It, it would be interesting to 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 listen to to get them to provide a bit more information there. Uh, what are we looking for? This one, right? And, um, you know, uh, explanation of alignment yeah. overlap existing. OK, um, so uh, Amy, can you please make a note? Uh, we are asking them to reapply with additional information on um, uh, overlap with CNCF projects and yeah, take a look at what I put in the chat. All right, I, I have a quick question. Sure. Yes. If they can't fill that in, is that going to really sway our decision? Like, I, I'm reading through Probably that. Probably not. Explain how it aligns with the cloud native computing ecosystem. And the justification that they provide is, first, it's easy to declare a development environment. And oh, by the way, it turns into a container. And then the second one is really that it's powered by Nix and that they're rapidly going to overtake Nix. Based off of like the things that I'm seeing here about the project, I think the project is cool. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but yeah. I don't know necessarily that any additional information they provide about alignment and overlap with existing projects right. at this point in time would persuade us one way or another. Right. And they're also asking, how do we integrate DevBox with other cloud native projects? So they are redirecting it back to us. And we are going to ask them the same question, and they are pointing back at us. Um, okay, fair enough. Okay, uh, so, I, does anybody see how to turn it into a container? Uh, I remember seeing uh, there was a command line. Uh, show uh, in it shell configuration and runway. Because um, well, they said you can turn it into a container. I'm not seeing the easy method to do that it's almost Sorry. missing that part of it um let's see which is the part that links it into the, the cloud native ecosystem is the thing i don't see in their docs yeah so that, that, that was my question. here because yeah, this one i think their box build uh, i don't see it here in the reference what happened to it uh i can't see the cache one dev box build i mean it may just be the features that are inherited from nix for building containers from nix and... yeah see, oops no it's not that's not a command line i in the interest of time and moving forward i yep. would recommend that either they actually really put the containerization of DevBox first and foremost of the project because that moves it closer to cloud native, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee that that we would accept them because like we we've been down this path before about packaging things into containers doesn't yep. automatically make it cloud native. Yes, agreed. Okay, so uh, for now, no, um, but they are welcome to reapply after figuring out um, 
you know some of the things that we talked about here okay uh, let's go to zot um anybody take a look at zot uh, justin perhaps yeah i mean i I've, it's been around for a while it's kind of i mean one of the questions i have is why um you know what is the what kind of is the difference with distribution and why and and why why not you know add features to distribution upstream rather than building some a, a new um, i have a feeling that they, yeah i have a feeling that they they got it in an acquisition or something this is from cisco folks um that would explain it because if you start digging into the contributor, some of their profiles list yeah. non Cisco companies. Yeah. So it might be, but I think they're OCI only and not traditional Docker. Uh, Docker. Yeah. Yeah. That they said that very clearly. Um, yeah. And they also said it's a single binary. So it makes it easy to yeah. um, run compared to the others. So I, I, I think I, I would like them to clarify the functionality difference with other image registry projects. Uh, I do not see that. And also they are code of conduct and just says, you know, it follows CSF code of conduct. Um, that's fine. That's yeah, okay. That's, that's, that's that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I think where Zot said it, it's different is they are an OCI spec only registry where All the right. other registry implementations, <laughs> OCI and traditional Docker, and <laughs> there are differences with Docker um, than OCI. In I mean, that, that, that's kind of, I mean, they say they intend to be the reference implementation of the OCI distribution specification, but the but distribution itself is, in fact, the reference implementation of the OCI distribution specification. I mean, it's, and that's, and it always has been. The fact that, um, I mean, you know, the reality is that everyone implements some of the historical docker pieces for compatibility reasons but like that doesn't um it's just kind of weird to declare yourself to be the, the reference implementation of something that already has a reference implementation in cncf uh did they say reference it does that's what it says Will what become. it says okay well okay but like <laughs> we've already got one <laughs> they do say that i read it yeah Hey, aspirations is not bad. <laughs> I mean, it says the focus of Docker distribution and Go Harbor is the legacy Docker format, which is absolutely just not true. It's literally, it literally is the reference implementation that everyone's using, and it's where all the work on new features is prototyped. I think so. I just, I just don't actually, um, you know, think that. I mean, then there's an opportunity for all these solutions to incorporate ZOS as a library or backend process, um, but none of them have. I mean, it just seems kind of, I don't know, it just, it just doesn't ring very, uh, I'm, so, not, I'm not against it as a project, but it just, I don't right. understand it's where it's coming from. How many registries do we have already? Uh, we have the Harbor, uh, like in CNCF. Do we have something else? We have, we have distri distribution, yeah. yeah. Is, is Dragonfly is is doing that distribution? Go Harbor Dragonfly. Yeah, yeah, Dragonfly. Yeah. Uh, is that that CNCF two? Dragonfly. Yes. Okay. But Harbor is using distribution as well. Yeah, right? Harbor uses yeah, distribution. Harbor is using, yeah. Yeah. Uh, distribution so, is is a distribution is the upstream reference implementation. It's not a product. Harbor is more of a product and, and Dragonfly is an extension to support specific use cases. I'm and Zot, Zot, yeah. Uh, on a technical side, I don't see any uh, any uh, reasons for not accepting, right? Like, yes, uh, the, the, uh, the some of the aspirational pieces kind of definitely rubs the wrong way um, and, you know, hoping that they'll play nice uh, after they join. Uh, that, that is if they have a well diversified community, then that, you know, that could be of use, useful. That could be useful. So in the interest of time, where are we going with this? Uh, okay, I'm gonna say 
on a technical side, there is no issues that we can see right now. Um, so um, I think we should go for it, um, but you know, they should probably tone down some of the things that they are saying here. Uh, but yeah, but that's not a caveat or anything. Um, so I'm I'm up for going forward with this. Any objections? Okay, we can move on. Okay, Parallels. Uh, anybody got Parallels? Notes on Parallels, please. Um, I had that this was the open source portion of the Rafe zero, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, zero trust access solution by the same company. And it seems super early for that project. Uh, so the thing that I remember from this one is uh, they kind of help the people who are uh, the platform teams um, from like letting different people access uh, all the clusters that they have, uh, which is which is a problem that we haven't really dealt with before um, in CNCF. So that was attractive to me. Um, Emily, I saw a nice uh, Did anyone, anybody else take a look at it? Yeah, this one. Uh, yeah, the... I took a brief look. They've been around for, what, about a year. They've got about 500 stars. They seem to have a bunch of things already in order around um, code of conduct, governance, and all of that stuff in place for a project. Mm -hmm. So as far as operating as a project, but what they they have a low number of issues what is it 44 total issues um so they've had a low amount of traction there they're only at like 60 some total pull requests and although they have lots of commits which makes me think either now or early on they were just pushing to master right the main um so if we have to ask them to do something what would that be so I, I think part part of the problem with the project is that they don't have a wide community base to actually like open a bunch of issues, increase PRs. They're not made, like going through their contributing guide and, and trying to look up whatever information I could about the project. They don't have like meetings to discuss the project and some of the roadmap planning to come up. So like, I think the project is valuable. I think there's more, community development activities that could be going on we can have excellent governance and documentation but if there's nobody there to actually apply it or enforce it, it we don't know how effective it is and and running and managing those communities so like i can see this kind of going a, a little bit either way either they're they're too early and we need to see more uh contributions to the repository more community development activities or we bring them in to get them that yeah, uh, I th I think this the part of the problem is this this kind of solutions would be like top down driven, right? When the C CXOs want to make sure that their uh, production systems are doing okay, then they put solutions like this uh, on top of that to make sure that people uh, who can only access they they lag they can access only the things that they should be accessing. Um, so th that's probably some of the reason why uh, they don't have like a big footprint uh, in the community already. Yeah, and and I think they're also is, are they developed out of India, so they're not uh, developed out of yes, uh, Rafi. Uh, Rafi. So they're not developed out of an area where we are much louder and more vocal with what we're building. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a startup. I think it's based out of. Uh, Silicon Valley for sure. And even if I look at the past three months, they've had six people contribute in the last three months, to it, <laughs> which is more than a lot of our other sandbox projects. Yeah. So you can see uh, India and US, uh, Karnataka, a lot of people from, you know, my home state back home. So that might be, you know, we need to, I, I think if you bring them in, they'll do better. 
in India, traditionally, open source is not like the open source we do here. Is there a reason not to? I don't see a reason not to. Uh, I can they, find they are one. all went, they, they are running on all the clouds and sorry, Emily. I, I was gonna say like the, the only thing would be around the community, but they can get that through uh, bringing them in. Right. Lots of things that we bring in don't have regular meetings to begin with and yeah. being here. Nudges That's them true. Too. Yep. Okay. I, I think okay. I'm okay with them. Yeah. Okay. So let's, uh, uh, I'll going once going twice, going three times. Let's go to number 12, Kepler. Um, uh, who here is a Kepler fan? Um, Kathy, did you look at it? I yes, yes, I, I went through it. Um, so it is, um, it is used to improve energy footprint. It, it collects performance data. Uh, related data based on eBPF programs and then aggregates this data with other stats, exports those to Prometheus metrics, and then it uses the Prometheus, Prometheus, Prometheus metrics to train the uh, machine learning models to estimate energy consumption by each part. So it, it said it's lightweight and with little overhead. I, and I, it also uh, integrate with the uh, uh, Kubernetes scheduler and the auto scaler to take the power resource um, to take the power resource into consideration to support better performance and the resource utilization rate. So I think it's a very good project. So sorry to be clear, which parts of this are applying to be in the CNCF? Because the the repo that they list is just the Kepler one, which is just the eBPF probes and not the rest of it with the the ML models and the scheduler and those things, or is it all of it? I'm just confused. Um, that That is something that maybe we can ask them. Uh, if they haven't listed it here, uh, let me go look on the right. I mean, it just seems to be the just the Prometheus exporter and not the rest of it that's being that's listed here in the description and the repo. And not the ML models or the scheduler or any of the other pieces which are under the same under the org. But I'm not sure because they're also called Kepler hyphen things as well, so it may, it may just be that they're. Confused by our form that unless you put one repo. <laughs> yeah, I had that same question too. Like the ML model is a part of the what is coming in. So one data here is like the code repository uh, is just the Kepler repository here. Okay, I think we can speed them up next time and uh, let them uh, answer that question. Like. We want the whole thing and not just the eBPF probe, right? Yeah. So I, I took a quick look at this and I was assuming it was the whole thing. I think this fits I, I assume the same. Yeah. sustainability and it's good work. It's cross company. So we have more than yep. one of our vendors already working on it. And I think it's a lack of clarity of what they're donating is the only issue here. And we want the whole darn thing, not just their exporter, which is what it looks like. So let's tell them that. I've got language coming, check for you, Dems. Yeah. Okay. Moving Sorry, on to slime. Amy. Sorry. Moving on to slime. The slime. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Uh, let's slime. Did anybody get a chance to look at slime? Um, uh, their China roadmap P. links to a problem. It's a four hundred four. Okay. And going through the repo, it doesn't appear that they use inclusive language and their update cadence with Kubernetes is off. So um, this project, uh, it seems a good project. It's a smart service mesh manager uh, built on top of, top of current service mesh to extend the, their core functionalities. Um, in a non-intrusive way, but I cannot see other links, you know, the, those in other 
each of the column, the links. Somehow I do not see those links. I don't know whether it's my own problem or not. Uh, you, you need to like down. scroll down uh, and see what I'm doing here. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. got it. Okay. Uh, it is <laughs> one of the cells are is very big. So. Oh, I see. Got it. Okay. Did I read it right that it's Istio only? It looks like it's Istio only. So they've got a bunch of dead links for us to evaluate and it's Istio only. Can I suggest they should come reapply with working links and yep. in the meantime, go see what the Istio project has to say about it because it's Istio only, okay. a sub-project of Istio just for due diligence. I would, I would agree with that, but I would also add that they need to have a better update cadence with the Kubernetes project because I believe the version that they're on is like towards the tail end of support. What, 122? I think so. Oof, okay. It, it, it was over a month since I looked at this, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's not deal with them right now. Uh, we can move to the next one. Uh, Karina, um, Karina is a cloud native storage system. CSI spec. It's an ops free CSI. Battle tested kernel modules. Do they have a, like an assessment from tech storage saying they should be taken in sandbox? I think I, I have it in my notes. I don't see anything from, <laughs> excuse me. Tim's I muted you for a second. Meet whenever you're 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 available again. Um, other conversations around Karina. Don't their website wasn't working for me. Am I the only one who saw it wasn't working? Oh. I I can look after when I get home, but I'm pretty sure there was a reference to some text or assessment that they had. Okay. That, uh, yeah, it's it. Yeah, it's not working now. Okay. Their website has appears to be frozen. Or maybe in a redirect loop. Uh, yeah, uh, Amy. Uh, so we don't have enough information to do this. We apply. Uh, <laughs> yeah, apply uh, and talk to tax storage. But we they, they so, but they already did reapply and they did talk to tax storage. That's what it's it says. just not clear what they said in here though. No, but but it's in the it's in the minutes of tax storage as well. If you check their minutes, there's a reference to Karina. They say okay. they should be percent but It's there. They, they say they have a recommendation to be included in sandbox. However, mm -hmm. I'm, you, can, you can find it in a minute of tax storage. I think I checked at the time, but I, I can double check. Up. OK, so working li links and come back, right? Well, I, I'm not sure the website is that vital. OK. It's only, it's only the website. I mean, it's, no one ever goes to open source project websites. <laughs> <laughs> so read me then. I think if we find the reference from tech storage that says they should be taken, we should consider them now. That part is actually up at the top. It does say uh, comments and discussions have been addressed. Should we get recommendation from tag storage to be included in sandbox? Okay, uh, then I think we should just go for it. We did get an okay from tag storage. Uh, we don't worry about the website itself. Uh, other than that, everything else seems okay. Okay, let's go to the next one. KO. Um, KO. So who loves KO here? Justin? I mean, I've not used it, but it's widely used. I mean, it's, I've not, um, it's not something I've used myself, but it's, it's, it's definitely widely used, well known. Well supported. Um, it comes from the Kinato community. Um, that's where it originated. Do I understand it right that it basically takes Go program, builds it, and sticks it on top of Distrilis to create container images? Yes. I think it's quite popular. I've 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 seen it in several places. Right. 
Now, one thing I, that came to mind for me about this was it uses DistroList, so it's single vendor in that way. Uh, what do you mean single vendor? The distro it uses. It builds and puts it on top of DistroList to stick it in. Uh, I think it's a, 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 it released from, originally released from Google, right? Well, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a single yeah. vendor, yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's the only reason, the thing that I noticed was the the, the single vendor distro list. Although I didn't look into, can you configure it to use other images as your base? Uh, I believe that you can, but I, I'm trying to look for where. Advanced migration, Windows images, star GZ support, OpenShift internal registry. Uh, is that a blocker? Yeah, that, there, there is a, there is a, there's a, there's a link there about here, here. Um, setting the base image. Uh, I see it. So, Your dot ko dot yaml file default base image. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we are good there. Uh, let's say any other objections, or we can just go for it. Okay, let's go for it. So we already dealt with Cubescape. So the last item, thanks for, for everybody. That, oh, Wait, hold on. Uh, we did not deal with Cubescape. I need <laughs> we, we need to actually discuss like on the record here. Okay, fine. Cubescape, uh, Armo, we got a response back from the folks uh, who submitted the project uh, and they clarify the things that, uh, the questions that we asked. They are okay with renaming their service and doing all the other things that we had asked them to do in our previous discussion. Uh, and, you know, they just didn't want to do it ahead of time in case, um, you know, we still say no, then it would be, you know, effort that didn't get any results as, as such. Um, but other than that, um, they're okay with the rest of the things. Uh, they. I think we were also talking about like switching the default uh, of the CLI um, from their service. We were also talking about, uh, hey, can folks uh, run uh, uh, set up a service by themselves and then use the CLI? Um, and they were open to all that as well. Um, no issues there. Okay, I'll mark about being able to have, because we've done this before around being able to make yeah. sure that the service and the product are, are slightly separate. Correct. Fair? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so their service should not be called Cubescape sure. and the Cubescape should just be a what is in the community or if they want to pick another However name. However they want to do that, but regardless yeah, exactly. of things. Need as to be long separate. as it's two different things. Yeah. All right. I will add that to our conditional. We can move on. Okay. I think we are all good here. So the last item on the list, uh, Talos Linux. Uh, I, who wants to talk about this first? Uh, has anybody used oh. Talos Linux? So I didn't, but the one thing which is kind of confusing at the bottom of the website, they're saying they are a member of CNCF, which it's weirdly undefined. Uh, they, they might be talking about the Sidero Labs. They are saying it on the Telos website, not on on the company's website. Here, if you go down I to the bottom, yeah, yeah, we are, yes, I like I read it as the labs, uh, but if they are claiming that, I don't know if they are a paying member or. Either the project is a member, which isn't the case, um, and then it's wrong, or they take the statement for their own company or from their own company, which would which would point towards being not really multi multi vendor. And that, that smells weird, and that's the one thing which stood okay. out to me. Got it. Uh, anything other than that? Um, I, I went through it, so it's a linear. Oh, no, no Go ahead, Kathy. 
Oh yeah, uh, it is a Linux distribution built for Kubernetes. Um, there seems, I'm not sure whether, there seems no other similar party. Um, but the thing is, uh, does it, do they have, a, I did not see a roadmap and uh, on their application, I do not see much information. Um, uh, let me see if they have, the, I don't, roadmap, let, let me search for roadmap. So the, the, they, 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 the go ahead. Sorry, they say there's no currently no other projects like it, which I think it. I mean, there's no projects like it in the CNCF, but there are projects that are trying to do similar things. We, we, um, but, um, yeah, so it's the company is a CNCF member, and I think that's what they're doing because they're currently saying the project and company that's coupled. They'd have to remove that when they decouple it. Um, but the reason for it is, if you look at the reason on the screen there, they want to get the community to standardize on Talos Linux. And I don't think that's going to happen. Um, their motivation for being in the CNCF, I think, is... Um, I mean, that's, that, that's very much outside our remit. Yeah, it's outside of our arena. And I will be shocked if all of these vendors who do Linux distros uh, are going to switch to this one. Um, I, again, this is forward. aspirational. I'm like Very giving you the way, Matt. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I, like, yeah, I think I needed more information here and it's just one liners that, you know, definitely one sentences rather. Yeah. Uh, every, in, every cell is just one. Inf yeah. I, I, one it's... I mean, the documentation is very sparse about like the internals of how it works and what it's right. built from as well, which is kind of, I mean, I could, we, um, it's kind of, um, kind of light on what the principles and what right. it's built from are. Like, how do you, change uh, if you want to add something how would you do it right uh, just says uh, okay um hardened by design so is does it essentially mean don't touch uh, just use and like i don't know if like it's, what it's, kind of it's a got basic some it's, it's got some documentation on how to make some kinds of customization to it Okay. I, but it's it's I, not clear. Um, it's not entirely clear what the I kind of extensibility either, principles are. Sorry, I think in their description we really need some details about what are the enhancement or technology they actually introduces to make it you know the idea OS for Kubernetes. This is something we can really find it easily in the whole application. That is my my uh, my reads from their. Uh, documentation right now right yeah i can't even say if uh traditional like cv scanners will work with this <laughs> yeah it's really hard to fail on the back what are the what are the innovation points or what are the key you know change they actually did it's it's kind of like just a, a single sentence description over there. I've got some wording in chat. I'm happy to be like convinced that I should do something different in chat. Like, uh, looking, you know, yeah. And the way I was thinking about it is, it sounds like what they applied with was more high-level marketing one-liners, and we want some more technical meat. That's that's clarification. That's fine. Yeah, I added one, uh, one, a few more questions, uh, Amy. Yeah, th there's not enough information for us to make a make a determination at this point. So yeah. come back. To this. Yeah. Yeah, I share share the same view. I think it's limited information for us to evaluate. Okay. Congratulations, everyone. <laughs> I'm going to drop this over into private TOC as well for um, decisions that we have made today. Yeah. Um, 
So we go there and do a plus one. Do a for... plus one over into private TOC in Slack yeah. so that I have this like, you know, kind of like all put together and we will send this one out. Okay. Sounds this good. It's the last time we have to do this. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Richie, Harry, <laughs> please don't forget. <laughs> okay. So uh, thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, you know, we are closing the year, right, Amy? Uh, we are done. Yes. We are done. <laughs> All right. Go so have turn fun off. with your family. Enjoy the holidays and we'll come back refreshed uh, and Thank we'll you. get started again. Yeah.